When I was a kid, my family used to take me out to farms where you could, you know, pet the animals and stuff. It was really nice. I do like farms. I never really thought there was anything creepy about them until I started working on this video. Now it all makes sense. Farms can be nice places, but they can also be isolated, dark, old, mysterious. The perfect place for creepy things to go down. I found some stories that will definitely show you exactly why I'm talking about. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the Top 10 Scary Farm Stories. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Hinterkaifeck murders. On April 4th, 1922, a search party went out to investigate the Hinterkaifeck farm in Germany. The neighbours of the farm had not heard from the family who lived there in quite a while, and the children hadn't showed up for school. What they found horrified them. In the barn, they found four ravaged bodies covered with hay. Inside, they found the bodies of two-year-old Joseph and the family's maid. The maid was actually new to her position there. She had replaced the last maid who left because she firmly believed that the house and the farm was haunted. The autopsies revealed even more horrors. The mother showed signs of strangulation and had seven blows to her head. The husband was caked with blood and his cheekbones were sticking out through shredded flesh. Their widowed daughter, Victoria, had her skull smashed in and her head had nine star-shaped wounds from a blunt object. Victoria's seven-year-old daughter seemed to have remained alive for several hours after her attack and had ripped her own hair out for some reason. Victoria's two-year-old son had been killed with a heavy blow to his face while the maid had died from a blunt force. Here's the creepiest part. The farm animals all around the house were all tied up but unharmed. Not only that, they had been looked after between the time of the murders and the discovery of the bodies. That means whatever or whoever killed the family actually lived at the farm with the bodies there for at least a few days, looking after the animals. To this day, the murders remain unsolved. The full story has many more grisly details to this almost century year old murder mystery. Next up at number nine now, we have The Creepy Farm. I found this story on yourghoststories.com, and as soon as I saw the title, I knew it was right for this video. It was written by Angelus Crudus, who said, I've been reading stories on this site for months now and love the hair raising creepiness of them all. I moved in with my husband four years ago. He lives, and now I do two on a 100 acre farm in West Quebec, Canada. The house is small and used to be a hunting shanty, then added on to make a lath and plaster house. It's over 150 years old and has two bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs complete with slanting ceilings. My husband bought the place off the guy whose family has lived there since it was settled back in the day. The man's father was a drunk and when we were cleaning up the place, we found hundreds of liquor bottles hidden all over the outside buildings. The first creepy thing that happened was the knock at the door. It was a clear knock three times. My dog even barked, but when I went to the door, no one was there. We are the only house on our street, and our nearest neighbour is a mile away at least. It isn't like it was kids playing a prank on us. My husband and I didn't say much about it. We don't like to call attention to whoever it is that lives in the house with us, because we feel like if we leave it in peace, it will do the same for us. The next thing happened when we were cleaning the drunken old man's tools up in the barn. There was a huge saw blade, about four feet across, used on old tractors. There was a nine inch nail in the wall and the saw blade was hanging on it through the holes in the middle. My husband was under it cleaning up some dirt when it fell off that nail and hit him on his hand. He was wearing leather gloves and so was unharmed if not unnerved. The nail was so long someone would physically have to move it away from the wall for it to fall like it did. Then just the other week I was doing the dishes and reached to the cupboard to put a plate away when the cupboard opened on its own for me. It was so weird, like someone wanted to help me with the dishes. I didn't say anything about it to my husband as it freaked me out, but three minutes later he saw someone walk by our window. Of course, when we went outside, no one was there. It was very strange. Then a couple of days later, the lights flickered on and off. They did this several times, but when my husband went out to the breaker box, nothing was wrong. He even went through each switch and turned them off, then back on to make sure. When he got back inside, the lights flickered again. It was only the lights on one side of my house. The whole thing is very strange. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Voices. This one came from Ori15 on Reddit, and it's a little reminder that it's not just houses and castles that can be haunted. He said, a couple with a ranch let me volunteer for a summer. I just wanted to learn how to care for
for horses and play cowboy. Well, they called me out and asked if I would do the evening feed for their animals while they went to visit their family in a town that was about an hour away. I said yes and got started. So I was alone with a bunch of horses and dogs. All of the horses were pinned up. I had not even let them into the pasture yet. The sun was still up. It was the opposite of a creepy time. Well, it took a left turn to crazy town when I walked into the barn and I heard people started talking. I was all alone. Nobody, at least a mile in any direction, and almost no way anyone could sneak in to mess with me. The voices were very low and unclear, so I have no idea what was said. The only reason I know I'm not crazy is that the dogs that followed me in acted like they heard it too. One started barking at where the voices came from, and the other started running around the room growling. Moving on to number seven now, we have the zombie horse. That title might give away the main theme of the story, but you don't get to say zombie horse very often in life. So so I just took my shot there. Reddit user P. Verplogan said, I grew up in a large suburb outside of Houston. It was during the early 90s when a lot of farmland settled by the original German immigrants was being brought up by developers and turned into new homes. My family lived at the very end of our subdivision, and past my house was a great expanse of farmland flanked by thick woods and old decaying wooden shacks from the 1800s. Every day on my walk home from school, I would pass by a particularly overgrown old shack, which I guess must have at some point been a house, which leaned like it would fall over at any minute on its tired old foundation, and just beyond it was a long row of fences. It was my daily commute to and from elementary school, and I'd walk by it, pick up interesting rocks and things, and I never really thought much of it. There was always construction while the subdivision was expanding, so they had dug long trenches for what I suppose was for a sewer, and erected electrical lines through the farmland. Beyond the fence was a small lake, which I had often snuck in to explore and catch frogs, but after an encounter with a water moccasin, which is a species of pit viper, I decided to stay clear of it. The farm had cows which would meander through the meadow, and one large black horse. A storm had rolled in during the previous night, and I remember that the clouds were so thick and black that it felt like night when I had arrived at school. It didn't take long before the storm was in full force, and the power had gone out at school. Our teacher decided to have us all sit together on the floor and read to us for the rest of the day, which was fine by me. The storm had passed, but the darkness lingered on when I got out of school. I walked down the now muddy path in the strange darkness, past the crooked house and beside the aging fence, each step becoming more and more difficult as the mud collected on my shoes. That's when I heard a thrashing. The cows weren't there, but I remember clearly that old black horse. I remember thinking that it was sick or injured or something. Its black coat was slick, and steam was rising off its body in the cold air. It was kicking its back back legs wildly and violently slamming its face into the muck. It had a weird look to it, not like it was panicking, but like it was calm, and it didn't look like it was out of breath. Again it slammed its head into the mud and kicked out its legs, then shook its head from side to side furiously. I stopped to watch it, looking back. I wish I had just kept walking. I remember that after a minute or two, it stopped and looked up at me, the grime sliding off its face. It must have been in a matter of seconds because I had no time to react, and the horse had charged towards me. It didn't jump over the fence, but instead lowered its massive head and tore through the gap between the fence boards. The wood cracked and splintered as its muscled body strained and its long neck extended through the gap. The horse savagely lashed out and started snapping at me. With its entire body covered in huge, swollen muscles, it would recoil and then slam all of its weight back into the fence, attempting to break the boards. It did that again and again. Its enormous broad teeth came inches from me, and I fell out of my shoes backwards, leaving them stuck in the mud. It's a miracle that the fence was holding it back. I could see it clearly now. The horse was burned, badly. The skin around its mouth had been seared off, and tendrils of pink, bloody skin snaked its way over its face like a spider web. The absence of skin made its teeth seem even larger, its black gums exposed, and its mouth frothing with spit that I could feel hitting me in the face. At that moment, I was absolutely terrified that this horse would kill me. I remember wanting to get up, but a thick mud had me trapped. I also remember the smell. It was like sulfur, a mixture of wet animal, burned meat and singed hair. But what has stuck with me the most were its eyes. They were cloudy like black ink poured into milk. As it struggled to reach me through the fence, its nostrils flared, and I could feel the heat of its breath on me, its teeth snapping shut over and over. The clacking noise of the heavy teeth slamming together was deafening. 
I left my shoes and ran home. I remember my mother screaming at me about the mud when I stormed in. I told her about the horse that had nearly killed me and that I had left my shoes there in the mud. She grabbed me by the arm and was going to make me take her back there to get them, but I cried and screamed not to go, so she went alone. When she got back she had my muddy old sneakers in her hands and she told me that she saw the horse, it was dead. A farmhand was dragging its body behind a tractor and he told my mom that the horse had died earlier that day. One of the power lines that had been installed running through the meadow was knocked over during the storm and the horse must have been near the lake because it had been electrocuted and killed. He said that it had died instantly beside that lake when the power went out hours ago. Next up at number 6 now we have the 7th barn. The story goes that there was once a wealthy farmer who owned a lot of land in Ohio. He built a new barn on his property every time his wife had a baby. He named the barns after each of his children and by the time this story takes place they had 6 kids and were expecting number 7. However the farmer's wife died in childbirth and so did her unborn baby. The farmer went insane with grief and couldn't tend to his farm. The family had no money and the farm started going under. Then on one night in the depths of his madness and despair the farmer took an axe and led his children out to the barns where he murdered them one by one. He buried each of their bodies in the six barns that had been named after their births. Then the farmer went to the seventh barn where he hung himself. As the story goes all of the barns were eventually torn down and the land was sold off. All except for the seventh barn. Nobody wanted to buy the land because of what happened there, so it was abandoned and soon fell into disrepair. They say if you go to that barn at night you can see the ghost of the farmer hanging from the rafters, his body swinging back and forth in the wind, dwelling on his terrible crime for all eternity. No one was ever really sure where the seventh barn was located, although it's definitely in Ohio. Some say it was the Kranz farm in the Cuyahoga Valley and others say it was at the top of the world in Northampton. In 97, a local Ohio teacher claimed that, after a lot of research, he had finally managed to track down the real location of the infamous seventh barn. He said that none of the barns had actually ever been torn down. The land had just been divided up and sold off, and the barns had simply been incorporated into neighboring farms. Moving on to number five now, we have the figure. This one was submitted to ghostsandghouls.com by one of their readers. They said, I live in South Africa, and this is where my story takes place. Me and a friend of mine, whose name is Berend, were traveling through the countryside on our way to a small town called Deleryville. We were used to small towns and country areas as we grew up there. However, I had never experienced anything like this. As we were driving, bad luck struck us like a hot iron and both tyres on the left side went flat. His car was a piece of junk. We were soon on the side of the road at 2am with only the full moon to light the area around us. There was no civilization nearby only local farmhouses far away. So I decided to leave Berend with the car and walk on to find any entrance to a local farm. I walked for about two thirds of a mile and at last found a gate. The gate was short and could easily be scaled. It was locked with a chain but I still climbed over in desperation. I could see the houses light in the distance so I walked along a gravel road towards it. As I kept walking towards the house I heard a very loud boom. At first I thought it was cannon fire but it couldn't be as there are no military bases around that area. I only heard this once but decided to move on. Now the skeptic would obviously have an explanation and I'm not saying it was cannon fire for it could have been something else but it pretty much sounded like an old type cannon. What could make a sound like that at 2 in the morning? Anyway, I continued. Now the countryside was a wide open landscape. There were only fields of grass for miles and miles with little quantities of trees. So about 20 meters from the side of the gravel road there stood a big tree. As I said it was around 2 am and only the moonlight was shining but something stood underneath that tree. A dark figure was just standing there facing me. It looked like a human figure so I was immediately struck with fear. I thought there must be some explanation for whatever was standing there so I kept walking. When I looked behind me again it was gone. How could something that big disappear so fast? I immediately turned around and ran away back towards the main road. I told Beren but he never believed me. Later on I found out there were skirmishes between the local farmers and the British army in the Anglo Boer war in that area. Next up number 4 now we have the Baldoon mystery. This is a legendary story that came from a farm near the town of Wallisburg, Ontario, Canada. In the 1830s a man called John McDonnell bought a prized piece of land. Many people tried to buy it off him, led by an old woman but John would always refuse. One day some of the women in the McDonnell family were talking and working in 
the barn when suddenly a pole fell from the ceiling. They put it down to a freak accident, repaired it and thought nothing more. Sometime later though a second pole came crashing to the floor, this time quite close to them. They couldn't figure out what was going on. Not long after a third pole almost crushed them. Scared for their lives now they ran out of the barn and into the house. This was the start of many strange accidents that plagued the McDonald family. The family heard strangers in their kitchen at night. Bullets and stones were thrown from the windows until every pane was broken. A visitor was hit by a stone in the kitchen. He threw it in the nearby river. Five minutes later the same stone landed in the kitchen again. There were fires too, starting all over the house, sometimes even on the roof. A psychic told them that they had to shoot the wing of a strange goose that was near their home with a silver bullet. John McDonald did that and then a while later he saw the old woman who wanted to buy his land. She was sitting on the porch with a broken arm in a sling. From that day on the mysterious happenings came to an end. Moving on to number 3 now we have Creepy Farm 2. Do you guys remember that story earlier that I simply called Creepy Farm? Well I found a sequel to it, shared by the same person, Angelus Crudus. They said, it's been almost a year since I shared my first story on here and for a couple of months after I wrote it our house was fairly quiet. Not so now. To give you a general layout of the house, it has an old front door which has been glued shut for many decades now with a small porch and stairs outside of it that are falling apart and have a big pine tree growing through them. Beside this glued shut door is our front window. Our house sits maybe 10 feet from the gravel road in the front. On the left hand side of the house is our driveway with a deck and side door towards the back of the house. We use this as our main front door. Once inside this door there is a small porch with another door that leads into the house proper. The house is very small with one large living room that is our kitchen and also a living room and stairs leading off of the living room and two small bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs complete with sloping ceilings. Our front window looks out over the road and has quite clearly had a bit of activity. In my first story I related how my husband saw someone walk by this house. Well this has now become an almost weekly occurrence. I have seen it also. It looks like a short person wearing a white shirt or blouse casually walking by that window. This has so far only happened during the day. Then last week my husband and I were watching TV on the couch in front and sort of to the side of the window we started hearing muffled conversation coming from the window. Our house is the only one on this rather long gravel road and our nearest neighbour is about a mile away. It was very strange so I muted the TV and we could hear distinctly two men talking to each other out there. As we listened the conversation turned into an argument with both men raising their voices. It was muffled and we couldn't really make out words but it was clearly happening. I was too nervous to go outside and check but I did go to the window I could only see the nighttime darkness of a new moon out there. The catalyst for me actually sharing this story happened four days ago on Saturday night. Our bedroom runs the length of the house upstairs and because of the slanting ceilings we have our mattresses on the floor with a chest of drawers at the foot of our bed separating our room in two with the door just beside this chest. Anyway we had just gone to bed and I was reading for a few minutes with the lamp on when all of a sudden both my husband and I saw a shadow of a rather tall large man walk into our room and into the back corner. As I type this I have goosebumps all over my body. It was the creepiest thing I have ever experienced. I obviously made my husband get up to check it but there was nothing there. Needless to say I didn't get much sleep that night and the lamp stayed on. One last thing, on the Monday following this I watched the same shadow walk up the stairs while I was sitting on the couch. I am sure that this shadow is the same as the old man who died in this house in the late 70s. The man was not happy in life and drank all the time, abused his kids etc. I'm not sure who or what is outside our window though because the shadow is tall where the thing outside the window is shorter. Anyways, thanks for reading about our recent experiences. Next to number 2 now we have the blue body. This one came from Reddit user Shanae Smith and definitely left me with more questions than answers. They said, ok so when I was 11 years old my house burned down at Christmas. While we were rebuilding that house my family rented out a farmhouse around 10 minutes away. This farm had about 40 acres, 10 of which was a grassy field and the rest of the 40 acres were all forest. Our landlord told us that the forest used to be a paintball field but he had to stop because dumb kids were shooting his cows. Anyway I was about 12 and my best friend came over. We were just messing around in the barns and decided to walk out and explore the forest. It took us a long time to get across the field and we had to get through some prickles and barbed wire fence until we could actually walk through the forest. We walked away a while before we found anything actually interesting. We found some old little shacks covered in spray paint and moss. Most were filled with beer cans and random pieces of clothing. We found some very strange things there. Anyway we were walking and climbing around all these things and all was going well when I heard my friend scream. It wasn't one of those joking I'm gonna spook you screams either. I shut up and ran over to her and I looked towards what she was looking at and there it was, kind of hard to see but tied up to a tree maybe 10 meters away was a mangled blue body. We didn't stay to investigate, we both booked it as fast as we could back to the house. We didn't even care about the prickles, we got sliced up pretty bad. When we got to the house panting and sweating we both started crying uncontrollably and told my mom everything. She called the police and they arrived shortly. They went out to investigate and an officer came back to tell us that it was just a rotting mannequin tied up. But they did find 
seven dead bodies where the old road had washed out in previous months. He thanked us and that was the end of that. And finally number one now we have the rocking chair. We're finishing now on a story from reddit user lover lover. Great name. It's a scary story that actually spans two generations. They said my grandma's is a very stereotypical horror movie house. Small midwest town, white and old looking home on a farm. She even has a chipped wooden mother mary nativity in the front yard. The worst is she has a cemetery about a half a mile down the road. Anyways I used to sleep in the room in the corner of the top floor and it had a wooden rocking chair in it. When I was younger I would wake up because I thought I heard it rocking to the point where I would wake up my grandma and I have to stay in her room. Well about 10 years later my mom, aunt and I during thanksgiving were talking about how creepy grandma's house was. My aunt goes on to talk about how when she was younger the reason my mom and her ended up sharing a room was because she thought her room was haunted. She said she woke up one morning and the rocking chair was about 2 feet closer to her bed and after that night it would start rocking on a nightly basis around midnight. Well there we go guys another long video but I think it was well worth it. Let me know if you've ever had any creepy farm experiences. Perhaps we can do a part 2. In the meantime thanks for watching as always my name is Danny Burke and I will see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.